Welcome to another video lecture on the 2022 NACO Physics Practical. In this video, our focus will be on the optics question. And this time around, we'll be focusing on the theory behind the question. So for the optics section, this is the, the apparatus you should expect to be given. The first is a plane mirror. The second will be four optical pins, the third, fourth thumb, thumb pins. The fourth is plane sheet, maybe about five or six plane sheets. Then this, the fifth is a drawing board. Then sixth is a mirror holder. Let me talk a little more about the optical pins and the thumb pins. They are essentially serving the same purpose, except that the optical, the thumb pins are generally useful for indicating the position on the line of incidence or or the line of reflection but the optical pins are good for tracing for ray tracing so if you want to trace it's good to start off with the optical pins then once you are done tracing you can replace that with the thumb pin so, so essentially you may just have four optical pins and may not be given the thumb pins or you may have both of them but they just have the purpose of tracing the the light part or the light rays now let's talk about the objective the objective in general is to verify the law of reflection of light using plane mirror so that's basically what the goal of this experiment is aimed at although the question may not be very direct in terms of verifying that law but no matter how they coin that no matter how the experiment will be, will be structured, the goal at the end is to show that the angle of incidence is equal to the angle of reflection. That's just what the experiment will end up proving or showing. So in this video, I'm going to pick an example or a possible uh, scenario that you should expect on the day of the exam. So this scenario I'm going to demonstrate is going is it relates to this law and relates to using this apparatus to verify the law of reflection using plane mirror. So let's take a look at this uh, most likely scenario. Let's take a look at this experimental setup. The plane mirror runs from point A to point B. So you'll be asked to position the plane mirror, then draw a line that runs through the plane mirror as seen from this diagram then you'll be asked to remove the plane mirror and draw a normal that runs through points pq so this normal is this normal that runs through point pq goes through the midpoint of this mirror so what that means is if you look at the distance covered by this mirror and you you take half of it then it means aq is half of the length of the mirror. Then the other thing you are meant to do is to draw another perpendicular line, perpendicular to the to AB. The perpendicular line should run through CD, right? So this is how the experiment goes. You measure distance X. So X is the distance between point A and C. So let's say that distance happens to be four centimeters for instance so it means x will be four centimeter now once you have x has four centimeter you draw a line from point c running through point up to point q that is you draw a line from point c up to point q so that's line cq then the next thing you want to do is to position two pins so you can have two optical pins here then this point these two points where you have your pins they are point p1 and point p2 then once you have your your pins on this line you position you, you replace the mirror and then you you position your eyes on the opposite side of these two points in other words you position your eyes on the right side of line q P. So then you look at the mirror, the plane mirror, to see 
if you can trace the, these two pins. So what's going to happen is this. By the time you are looking at, at the mirror from this angle, from this eye angle, the, the pins will appear to be somewhere here. The pins will appear to be somewhere here. And the reason for that is because this pin will reflect, we, we, we appear to be here, behind the mirror. And this pin will appear to be behind the mirror here. So by the time you are looking at it from this point, you will see the two pins lined up behind themselves. Now, once, you, once you've successfully uh, positioned your eyes in such a way that you can place a pin that covers both of them. In other words, if I can place a pin here, and that pin lines up with these two pins here, then this point is on this line of reflection. So you have this one positioned here, then you do you place another pin here, such that this pin covers all three pins. Once you've gotten that successfully, you draw a line that runs from point P4 up to point D, right? So once you've done that, the next thing you want to do is to measure the following angle. You measure this angle, angle theta 1, and then you measure angle theta 2. Once you have these two angles, the third thing you want to do is to measure angle theta, which is the average of these two angles. That's theta 1 plus theta 2. Then divided by 2, that's the average. So once you've gotten this average. The next thing you want to do is to take the tan, the tan of theta. And once you have the tan of theta, the last thing you want to do is to take the, the reciprocal of x. And once that's done, you've gotten all your readings. So this is how you, you, you perform this particular experiment. The one you might see might be slightly different from this, but somehow you'll be expected to measure some angles and maybe in combination with some distance. Sometimes it could be distance AQ, it could be distance AC, or AB, or QB, or whatever. But at the end of the day, you'll be expected to measure some distance and also expect to measure some angles. Now, let's look at how the table of reading will look like. So the table of reading is going to look like this. We are going to have a table of reading like this. Where you have X, then you have the value of theta 1, then theta 2, then theta, tan theta, and finally, you are going to have the reciprocal of x. So let me put that here, the reciprocal of x. So this should, this should be your table of reading. So for every value of x, let's say this is 4 centimeter, you get the reciprocal, which is 0 0.25. You measure theta 1, you measure theta 2, you look for the average, which is theta, then you take tan theta. So you do that for various values of x. And the next thing you'll be asked to do is to plot a graph of tan theta on the y-axis and x raised by minus 1 on the x-axis. So I'm going to explain the theory behind this experiment, then also give you an idea as to how the graph is going to look like. So let's take a look at that. Let's take a look at the theory behind this experiment. From the law of reflection, this angle of incidence, let's call this theta i, is expected to be equal to theta r, which is the angle of reflection. So, from this law, we can tell that theta i is equal to theta r. But how does theta i relate to theta 1 and theta 2? From geometry, look at the shape. If you look at the shape, this line is, that is line AC, is parallel to line PQ. And because it's parallel, we can see that these two angles alternate. These two angles, that is angle one, ang angle theta one and angle theta i, they alternate. And in geometry, alternating angles are equal. So what this means is theta one is equal to theta i. 
then we can also do apply the same idea here if you extend this line this line pq you will see that this angle here is opposite to angle qr so this angle is angle qr because opposite angles are equal from geometry from plane geometry we know that opposite angles are equal what that means is if i have this kind of angle this angle here angle a here is equal to this right and angle b is equal to this so we can say that this theta r is equal to this angle here and we can also observe that this angle is alternating this angle here because these two lines are parallel and alternating angles how you know alternating angle is if you look at any shape that looks like N or Z, the angles at the, at the corners here are the same. So we can say that theta 2 is equal to theta R. So what this means is theta, which is the average of these two, will essentially give you the same thing as Q as theta I. Because we know that theta I is equal to theta R. So if I take the average of two things that are the same, so which by extension it means Q1 should be equal to theta 1 should be equal to theta 2. So if I take the mean of two things that are the same, it means this theta is essentially going to be the same thing as theta 1, it's going to be the same thing as theta 2, it's going to be the same thing as theta i, and it's going to be the same thing as theta r. So then what about this tan theta? So it means tan theta is just uh, tan of the incidence, angle of incidence, right? That's tan theta. That's this theta. So how does it relate to, to x? We know that tan, the tan of, of any angle here, the tan of an angle is equal to the opposite, that is tan theta is equal to the opposite, which is line AQ divided by the adjacent which is x so this means tan theta can be expressed as like aq times x raised to the power of minus one so we can say that tan theta is directly proportional to the reciprocal of x and the slope will be the slope of our graph is expected to be distance aq which is half of the length of the mirror so which means the slope is meant to be the the half of the length of the mirror basically then how do you think the, the what about the the y intercept since we don't have y intercept there's there's nothing else added to this it means the y intercept is zero so what that implies is your graph will start from zero and go upward where the slope will be equal to distance AQ. So this is the principle behind the theory or the principle behind this experiment. So let's look, talk about the precautions. What are the precautions you need to observe while performing this experiment? So I'm going to look at five precautions that should be observed when performing this experiment. The first is ensure the optical pins are placed vertically without bending. So when tracing the the line of reflection, ensure you don't position the optical pins in such a way that it's bending. And when also placing pins on the on the line of reflection, in other words, when placing pins here, Ensure that they are they are they are standing vertically so that it will be much easier for you to trace, right? The second is ensure the optical pins are reasonably spaced. In other words, let there be some level of space in between the optical pins. Ensure the objects optical pins line up in a straight line with the image pins before taking readings. In other words, if you have the two object pins here, why tracing? The, the 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 line of reflection ensure this lines up with what you see here before taking any readings otherwise your result will not be accurate and ensure error due to parallax 
when reading from meter rule or protractor, because if you'll be working with protractor and meter rule or any rule ruler that you want to use to take length or measure length, make sure you avoid error due to parallax. Then the fifth error is ensure the traces are neat so as to enable accurate angular measurement. So these are the precautions you should avoid. And uh, this brings us to the end of this video. There is something I need to mention. In the next video, we are going to simulate this experiment using the Marvin of Physics lab. So in case you want to get the software before watching the next video, you can check our description for details on how to get the software so that you can simulate this experiment virtually on Marvin of Physics lab. See you in the next video.